Hello and welcome to this undergraduate skills video where we're going to learn about various basic laboratory calculations which will be extremely useful as you progress through your degree. Now why do you need to know these calculations? Well it will allow you to safely dilute solutions in the laboratory whilst ensuring your experiments are at the correct concentrations. So without further ado, in this particular video we are going to focus on calculating dilution factors and dilution ratios. And so in order to talk about this, we need to understand what it is to be a solution. In its most common form, a solution is a liquid made up of two components. The first is the solute, and this forms the minor component of the solution. Essentially, it is being dissolved in the solvent, which forms the major component of the solution. Therefore, something can be both a solute or a solvent, depending on if it is more or less of something it is being added to. Now the amounts of solute and solvent present within a solution determine the overall concentration of the solution. Essentially this is the amount of solute per known amount of solvent and it's important for us to know the concentration of solutions in almost all practical applications to ensure we are safe in the lab and to give meaning to some of our observations. Now when there is a high amount of solute dissolved in a solvent, we would say the solution is concentrated or that it has a high concentration. When there is a low amount of solute dissolved in a solvent, we would say the solution is diluted or that it has a low concentration. In both these examples, concentrated and diluted are relative terms which can be used as verbs. So as an example, dilution is the process of decreasing the amount of solute per solvent within a solution so that it is at a usable concentration. Now this can be achieved through many different methods and in this video we are going to look at dilution factors which don't actually require you to calculate the actual concentration and that is because dilution factors are essentially the ratio of a solute to the total volume of the solution which is not to be confused with a dilution ratio which we'll talk about later. Now in its simplest form we can express the dilution factor as the ratio of the volume of our solute, known as V1, to the volume of our final solution, known as V2. Essentially, how much of our starting solute do we have in our final solution, expressed as a ratio. And so our solute volume acts as the anticent on the left side of the ratio, whereas the final solution volume acts as a consequent on the right side of the ratio. And so to calculate our dilution factor, we essentially divide our consequent by our anticent, meaning our final solution, V2, is divided by our solute volume, V1. Now to help better understand this, let's look at a couple of examples. So a student is in the lab and pours 50 ml of a 1.25 molar hydrochloric acid solution into a beaker and then tops this up to a final volume of 1 litre using water as a solvent. And essentially the student wants to know what is the dilution factor. So if we bring up our equation, we can see that the dilution factor is equal to V2 divided by V1, which we then substitute with our data from our example, so that it becomes 1 litre divided by 50 millilitres. Now this is a problem. We have different units of measurement which need to be converted to similar units so that they can eventually cancel each other out and so we need to convert our litres to millilitres, giving us an equation of 1000 millilitres divided by 50 millilitres, which when solved gives us the answer of 20 which is unitless. Now as I said earlier, the dilution factor is commonly expressed as a ratio, and so our 20 becomes the consequent as we add in our antecedent value of 1. Therefore the dilution factor is 1 in 20, meaning for every 20 parts of our final solution, one of those parts will be our starting solvent, which is hydrochloric acid. If we look at a second example, a student adds 0.1 millilitres of a bacterial suspension into a beaker containing 9.9 millilitres of bacterial growth media. The student essentially wants to know what is the dilution factor. And as always, we bring up our equation where the dilution factor is equal to V2 divided by V1 which we then substitute with the data from our example. Our V2 will be 0.1 millilitres plus 9.9 millilitres, which is then divided by 0.1 millilitres. And if we were to solve this sequentially, starting with the top of our equation, we would end up with 10 millilitres divided by 0.1 millilitres, 
giving us the final answer of 100, which again is unitless. And as I said earlier, the dilution factor is commonly expressed as a ratio, and so our 100 becomes a consequent as we add in our antecedent value of 1. Therefore, the dilution factor is 1 in 100, meaning for every 100 parts of our final solution, one of those parts will be our bacterial suspension. Now moving on to our final and slightly more complicated example, a student needs to prepare a 1 in 50 dilution of a stock 1024 mg per mil antibiotic solution for an experiment. However, for this experiment, they only need 5 mil of the diluted antibiotic stock. The student wants to know how much of the stock antibiotic solution do they need. Now you might have noticed this question is the opposite of what has been asked in our first two examples, and so we need to bring up our equation, and if we were to substitute this information into our equation, we would get our dilution factor of 50 is equal to 5 milliliters divided by V1, which doesn't make much sense at this stage. But if we were to use some basic algebra to rearrange our equation, we end up with V1 being equal to 5 milliliters divided by 50, which means V1 is equal to 0.1 milliliters. Therefore, we would take 0.1 milliliters of our antibiotic and mix that with 4.9 milliliters of our solvent, giving a final solution volume of 5 milliliters. And finally, as I said earlier, dilution factors are not the same as dilution ratios. So, as we've learnt, a dilution factor is the ratio of the solute volume in the final solution volume. So in the example here, if we have a dilution factor of 1 in 5, we would have 1 part solute, 5 parts total solution, meaning we would have 4 parts solvent. Now if we compare this to our dilution ratio, this is the ratio of the solute volume to the solvent volume. So if we had a dilution ratio of 1 to 5, we would have 1 part solute to 5 parts solvent, meaning we would have 6 parts total solution. And I guess the key differences between the two is in the small nuances in how they are phrased. Dilution factors are the most common and look at parts of solute in parts of solution, whereas dilution ratios look at parts of solute to parts of solvent and are much less common. And with that, we come to the end of this basic laboratory calculations video. Hopefully you found the content useful, easy to understand, and can use it going forward during your data analysis. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I hope you have a great day.